Merhaba arkadaşlar. Bugün üniversiteden hocamızla beraberiz. Kendisi mo- moleküler mikrobiyoloji uzmanı ve hani üniversitede de zaten mikrobiyoloji hocamızdı. Kendisiyle bu hani koronavirüs hakkında biraz konuşmak istedik. Yani bu süreçte tabii hocalarımız bizim akademik makaleleri okuyorlar, onunla ilgili araştırmalar yapıyorlar ve biz de onların tecrübesinden faydalanalım istedik. Çok sağ ol Ömerciğim. Ee, tabii şimdi bu günler çok zor günler yaşıyoruz. Korona, korona her yerde. Herkes korkuyor. Bazı şeyleri anlamıyoruz ee, ve biz de aslında biz de sürekli yeni yeni e, bilgiler alıyoruz. Ve her gün o bilgileri yani artıyoruz, e, öğreniyoruz. Hocamız evet. e, Amerika'da eğitim aldığı için İngilizceye daha hakim. O yüzden İngilizce devam edeceğiz. Biz onu altyazı ekleyeceğiz. So what is corona? We, we, everybody hears about Corona. So what is Corona? Where did the name come from? Corona is the name of the virus that causes a disease that is named by WHO, the World Health Organization, as COVID. Ne demek COVID? Which means a coronavirus that came from SARS in 2019 was the first case what, that was discovered in China. So that's how the name came about, okay? COVID-19. The name of the virus is SARS-CoV-2, which means it is the second generation of SARS because we have, like in 2003, we have also an endemic of uh, SARS-CoV-1, you know, generation one. And we were also scared at that time because a lot of people died in China and it was spreading, but thanks God it was, you know, stopped. But this one now it is a pandemic because a lot of countries are in you know affected by this virus and it's spreading so fast it is different and it is more vicious than the other generation of SARS. So let's talk about this virus what it exactly is doing in our body. So the virus is targeting our you know epithelial uh, our you know pneumono pneumocytes in our lungs which is the lung cells okay? The lung cells have receptors on them. So they favor those receptors on the lung cells and then they bind. Structurally, they have something called spikes. So they bind those spikes onto those receptors on the lung cells. And then they enter into the lung cell and then now the lung cell is a factory for them. So they start producing more and more of these you know, uh, little tiny structures, destructive structures of the viruses. And then it spreads all over the body. So accordingly, you know, to the load of the virus in our body, we can divide, you know, uh, the cases that we have because of this coronavirus entry into the, to the you know, the lung cells into uh, different stages for this disease. So let's start by stage one. So stage one, See, you know, now I'm talking about the mechanism of the disease, how it works um, in our body and why we should be afraid of it and, and why we shouldn't be afraid of it. Because, you know, at the, at the same time, that is a very vicious, virulent virus because it spreads very fast. It's different than the other viruses as we, we talked about. But at the same time, if we can control it in the earlier stages, we can, you know, prevent... Uh, the fatality number in the end of the stages, which is in the fourth stage, which is, you know, the critical stage, which is at that stage you have to get into the hospital and you have to to be under the, the uh, you know, mechanical ventilation and uh, sometimes, you know, the whole organs collapse, you have a multi-organ failure and people die because of this. So. You know, in the first stage, you've got a couple of symptoms. If you got infected by this virus, you have a couple of symptoms. And those symptoms, you know, it can, it could be dry cough. Uh, you can sneeze maybe a little bit. You know, uh, sometimes some people, they have runny noses. You have a fever. You have shortness in breath. And at this stage, if it was discovered by testing, then it can be controlled. It can be treated and then you know, you can leave the hospital, you don't have to stay in the hospital. And, and sometimes also, you know, the healthy individuals, they can develop immunity against this virus, and then they can have the mild form of it as, as if you have a very simple flu. So you've got very simple symptoms, and then, you know, you are okay. You're almost even not aware with you, that. You're not going to be aware. You're going to think that it's just a flu virus, mm-hmm. okay? 
And then, you know, if you're not, you know, some, it depends on your, you know, immune system. And if you went to the hospital and you were tested for it, uh -huh. then you might develop a moderate form of it. Then now you have, you know, the fever is more, you know, you, you're going to feel more. You know that the, the the body temperature is going to rise more. You're going to have more severe coughing. You have runny noses. You have aches in your you know body. You're going to have headache. So at this point, you know, you better get treated. Okay. So it might then move into the severe form, and then in this in the severe form, you have to be in the hospital. So they can give you you know the medication that you need. You know, so in this stage and the critical stage, which is comes after the severe stage, those both of these they are very very dangerous for the patient because they might you know have a multi organ failure and they could die because if they don't have treatment, and sometimes if they are elderly people, then they might you know not tolerate this very heavy load of the virus and they might die. Actually, it seems uh, very horrifying when you, when we talk about the symptoms. But uh, what about the rates? Is it like uh, uh, I see lots of pictures about they are comparing with the flu and the coronavirus. So uh, can we say that this is more dangerous than all of the other virus diseases? Um, or exactly because you know yeah the flu you can uh, you know you can have the symptoms uh, for two weeks maybe you can have like you get tired you got you know you can't stay at home the problem with this virus is vicious because it works in a different parts in your body like if you want to talk about molecular level mm -hmm. it is very destructive so it works on red blood cells and it binds to the receptors on the intestines because they have low ACE receptors on the intestines It has receptors on the, you know, in the blood vessels. Um, you know, it has receptors in the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, it affects the whole body. At the same time, one of the papers that like came recently, it attacks the natural killer cells and it attacks the T cells. So natural killer cells are the first line of immunity. You know, they are non-specific immunity. They're very important immunity. for our immunology. They are very, very, very important to defend your body at the first. You know, when they encounter a foreign body in your mm. enters into your body, okay. So they are the first ones as soldiers to attack. Yeah. But then you have more specific immunity, which are the T cells. So if they are destroying both of these, then they are attacking the immune system as well. So we better fight them as soon as possible. You know, otherwise we're gonna be in big trouble. So it also depends on us, like how we gonna control our infection. It depends on people. How clean we are, so you know. We actually, I see lots of people are. They are very cautious about cleaning, like washing their hands and not touching your face. We already seen them. Exactly. And also using uh, colonia and disinfectant. It's true. This is a very beautiful uh, Turkish in the Turkish culture, colonia. <laughs> I love it very much. I have it back in home too because I'm half Turkish as well. So I carry this in my office all the time and I taught my students to, to use it because it's a disinfectant. I think it is from 70 sometimes to 80% alcohol in it. Mm -hmm. So it is nice, okay? But also, you know, soap and water. Soap, you know, because this virus has a capsule which is made of lipids. Yes. It has an envelope made of lipids. And you know how the soap works on the lipids. So yes. regular, you know, you don't need an antimicrobial soap. You can use just a regular soap and wash your hands, but the way Dr. Oz <laughs> taught you about. So that's the appropriate way to, you know, wash your hands. Mm -hmm. So if you use like the really, you know, the regular soap, it can take away this virus from your hands. Yes, and then, sure. but you have to do it a couple of times a day. So you have to make sure because you don't know where you are going, where you are touching. Yeah. Especially the doorknobs, maybe, you know, it's very contaminated. Because everyone touching there. Everybody's touching like there. Common areas. Exactly. If you are wearing contact lenses, it's very important to wash your hands before you touch those because you don't, because it enters through the eyes yeah. as well. It should be sterile. It has to be sterile, your hands also. Yeah. And you can do also, um, you know, you can wash your nose because it lives in the sinuses. Mm -hmm. It lives in your throat. Up this is very important, you know, because we are doing it five times a day. And mm -hmm. the way we are cleaning our nose and mouth, it's exactly what is required from us 
now as preventive measure so you know the virus is not going to go you know to our lungs and start or initiate the infection mm -hmm. so it's a very nice thing to do okay yeah. so to so far we learn about coronavirus and covid-19 the disease name and we learn what is the what are the symptoms and the stages and how we save ourselves from that like cleaning cleaning methods so i want to ask that what about the uh, We are thinking about the future, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So what's going to happen after that point? Like all the countries are focused on it because everyone, uh, like in some countries, for example, in Italy, the impact is huge and the government uh, must make some big rules like not going out and okay. social distancing. So uh, can the vaccine should be a... Uh, Available. Available soon. soon. And what are the stages of vaccine? Or is there any other treatments now? Or can doctors and scientists solve that problem in, as, uh, soon as, as soon possible. as possible? See, the problem with Italy, let's talk about Italy. Italy, they have a very, their, their population, the percentage of old people is very high. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why the number of deaths coming out from Italy is very high. So as I said, it affects mostly this virus is a killer for elderly people mm -hmm. and especially if they are sick with the chronic diseases such as diabetes you know heart disease uh, lung diseases you know um, you know arter artery diseases if they have all of these you know or tension blood mm -hmm. pressure you know like um, uncontrollable blood pressure mm -hmm. then uh, they're going to be infected with this virus and they cannot survive it okay so of course we have to do something about it but at the meantime you know The first thing we have to do is preventing each other from getting this virus. So we need to isolate ourselves. And I'm wondering about the solutions like vaccines and treatment ways. So what are the treatments and the future solutions for this coronavirus? Um, now, of course, everybody is um, in every country in the world. They are um, in a race to find a cure for this virus and to uh, to decrease the number of the people that they are dying because of it. We're going to be talking about the medication right now, like in this morning, uh, Trump approved the use of uh, chloroquine um, uh, with other in combination with other drugs. They I don't know the protocol yet, but it is an effective treatment, you know, for this virus. So they will be using it in the United States, and um, I think it it was used already in the in China, and that's why it, it's been seen as an effective uh, treatment for coronavirus. So you know we're going to be using that, and they are using it um, in different countries as well, and um, it is an anti-malarial drug originally, which was used in 1945. But uh, see, we are using it right now again. But there are other kinds of treatment that they are uh, searching, such as uh, the engineered monoclonal antibodies. This is again this morning. Um, a doctor researcher uh, from a, a bio institute in the United States came out to say that they're like in a one month, they're going to come out with a treatment for corona using uh, engineered monoclonal antibodies, which is uh, targeted uh, specifically to kill coronavirus which is very nice, you know, I'm going to be waiting for that. Now for the vaccine... Yeah, this is a new technology, right? This is a high-tech new exactly, technology. Exactly, but they are using it right now, they are using it for cancer patients, mm -hmm. you know, monoclonal antibody uh, as immuno, immunotherapy for cancer. So now they are going to try it, you know, to use against coronavirus. Now for the vaccine, uh, the vaccine is already made, but it's on trial, okay? Uh, and you know, the vaccine takes about 14 months to come out. Mm -hmm. 14 sometimes 18 months so we're going to be wait waiting for that um, at least for 12 months from now you know to come out because it has to go through clinical trials mm -hmm. and then the problem with that we don't know if it's going to work or not you know but in the meantime the most important thing is to find a good medication a good drug that's gonna you know kill this virus and then the other thing is prevention So we have to isolate ourselves, you know, take care of our immune system to be strong all the time to defend ourselves against this virus. And then, you know, uh, by this way, maybe we can distinguish this virus, you know. 
and f the the problem also with people they don't want to isolate themselves and they want to you know they are spreading the disease more and then uh, you know the health system is you know it's getting crowded with those patients and we don't have all these machines let's say ventilation machines in the in the hospital to take care about all of these patients so we are killing each other at the same time by not isolating of our, ourselves so this is a problem as for the kids uh, as we learned from the newly uh, you know published papers that this virus targets the adults lung receptors okay lung cells receptors and they favor that so that's why we have like most of the problems with the adult people okay so, and especially the elderly people because they are chronically ill people okay so they have other diseases you know plus you know the coronavirus uh, enters their cells and is being is destroying their lung cells you know they don't have lung cells left anymore and you know how important it is lung cells to carry oxygen or you know for ventilation and the red blood cells to carry oxygen all over your body so it is destroying the alveoli in the lung which is the ex where the you know gas exchange occurs so you're going to have nothing left so that's why people are dying. But now for, you know, the receptors, we can't find the same receptors on the kids' pneumocytes, which is, uh, you know, uh, which is, you know, that is the thing where, you know, this virus is attacking uh, the adult's receptors, which means it's more specific for the adult receptors, and it does not recognize much of the, chi the children's receptors in their lung cells. So the children can be infected, but they might not show the symptoms, but they can excrete the virus in their feces, and then they can contaminate or infect other people this way. So the mothers and the fathers should be aware of this. They have to teach their children how to wash their hands, how to be clean in the bathroom especially, and they also the bathrooms should be disinfected. Uh, you have to be taking care of this matter. What about for us, for young people? What you suggest for young people to do nowadays? Now, for the young people, what I advise, as I'm a teacher here and I can see a lot of people or a lot of young people, they are smoking a lot. And especially for the girls, my advice is stop it now. So you can help yourself for the future. Um, when you are smoking cigarettes, you are decreasing your lung capacity to deal with any, you know, kind of infection. You know, you can't, uh, and if you get, you know, infected with corona, now that you've been smoking for a long period of time, this is not good for you. You know, you don't want to, uh, uh, you know, pardon me if I said the death with coronavirus is very painful. You didn't see it. It's really, really painful because you can't breathe. You stop breathing and everything is gone in your body. Everything stops. It's multi-organ failure. Take care of yourself. Eat well. Take your vitamins. Zinc, you know, it's very important for the immune system. Vitamin D is very important. Vitamin C is very, D, C, zinc, E. Those vitamins are very, very important for you. Do exercise because, you know, the circulation and the immune system, it's going to go, you know, it's good for you. And then sleep well, not less than seven hours. Decrease your stress. Because if your stress is high, your cortisol is high, then your immune system is down. You can't fight, you know, the infection. So, and don't gather with your, you know, no more than four people and keep a distance from each other. Because even if you get it as mild, you might, you know, infect your parents. You might infect your grandparents. And you don't want to do that. And keep carrying this with you all the time if you don't have alcohol. And then wash your hands with soap and water constantly in the right way. And, you know, put as CDC came out today and they said, instead of using masks, if you don't have masks like these, then you can use something heavy like a bandana. You can put it, you know, around your mouth or nose. So it might protect you that way. So, inshallah, everybody will be safe and we will decrease the number of fatalities. And inshallah, you know, we're going to defeat this, you know, deadly little creature. Hopefully, inshallah. Hopefully. Inshallah, Jam. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jam. You are welcome. It was very beneficial for us. I hope that you enjoyed and you learned lots of things from that video. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, Amar, for giving me a chance to talk. And um, if I was very helpful, I'm very, very happy. <laughs> thank you all.